Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler and in today's video we are going to look at phototropism. If you are new here don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed because I post a new content every Tuesday and Thursday. If you are in matric and you're looking for some extra help especially as you prepare for your exams you should think about joining my membership. There are so many perks including the membership like members only videos videos, live lessons, as well as my famous study guide, which is included for free for people who join the Rescue Me package. Let's get into the video. Now, if you are watching this video, I'm assuming you have a little bit of knowledge about plant hormones and their effects on plants. And I'm going to break down how a hormone called an auxin affects the way in which plants grow. Now, when we speak about phototropism, we are speaking about uh, movement or tropism uh, and how light affects that movement or that growth. And what you can see in the picture down below is a perfect illustration of how phototropism works. It's the way in which plants are attracted to sunlight. It's also the reason why roots grow down into the ground away from the sunlight. At a later video, I'm going to explain geotropism for you, which is a plant's response to gravity. Now, if we go into the fundamentals of phototropism, we need to look at how auxins affect the way in which a plant grows. But where do we find auxins? So we find it in two places. We find it in the roots and the shoots. And specifically, we call this the apical point of the plant. Um, you may have heard like apical meristems. That's exactly what we're talking about here. And if we have a look alongside at our diagram, you will notice that the auxins, when produced at the tip of the shoot, are highly concentrated at the tip, and then they sort of evenly distribute as they go down. Now, they will remain in that pattern if um, you have sunlight coming unilaterally. And this is a really important word, um, unilateral light. Um, and it's going to affect your understanding of this topic and questions on it. But unilateral means like from the top um, or it can also mean from like evenly, like all directions. So in other words, there's no shadow, there's no dark side. That's what unilateral means. It means uni, even, one. But then if we move the sun over or we move the light source over, as you can see here, it does something to the auxins. It actually pushes them over to the dark side. As you can see here, they're all migrating over to the dark side. Now, the effect is going to impact the cell elongation. And the cell elongation is going to change. And as you can see, it's going to cause our stem to bend over so we can face the light. But how does this actually work and how are you going to explain this mechanism? So first things first, you need to understand that cell elongation is when we take a cell that is fairly small and square, and over time we want to elongate it, make it longer and bigger like that, right? That's how plants get taller, that's how they get bigger. But when you're doing this explanation, you need to incorporate some important steps in your answer. The first step is you need to mention that the auxins have moved on to the dark side. Okay, that's the first step. And the reason for that is they are sensitive to light. That's why they're moving away. The second thing that you need to always mention in your answer is that the auxins in the shoot, okay, and this is important, they stimulate elongation. Um, and the, the emphasis is on stimulate because it does the opposite in the roots. So, so this little word over here, stimulate, is like really important to mention. And so you're going to say the auxins stimulate elongation on the dark side. And the third and final part of your answer in terms of the growth is you need to mention that the cells on the light side inhibit elongation because we've moved the auxins away. And therefore, if we round that answer off, it means that we are going to bend 
towards the light. And that's how you would like structure your answer. That's how you would explain auxins causing bending. Now, what I thought would be really useful would be to show you a common exam investigation question. And the good news is there's really only two ways they can ask phototropism. So you can expect one of these two experiments in some format, some way. I want to start off with the easier one of the two, which is this one here on the right-hand side. And this one is very straightforward. You've got a plant in a box and you've got uh, a plant receiving light directly from the top unilaterally. And then you've got a plant on the other side here where it's got its opening and its light source coming just from another direction or like bending towards that light. You can see the difference there. This is the most common way they ask it. And to be honest, the thing that they are trying to see here is they're trying to see how light affects growth. Okay, and that's generally the, the sort of aim of that experiment. The one on the left hand side here is a lot more difficult. It's a lot more complicated and you're not going to get every single one of these. You might uh, maybe in like a mock exam, but the final exam will probably have like two of these. And this experiment is a little more difficult um, because of its aim. Its aim is focused on the effect um, of auxins. And so what you're trying to do is prove that auxins actually work. Like, are they actually doing their job? And so I'm just going to show you what some of them are um, so you understand them if you see it. So the very first one over here is the control experiment. You'll notice that they haven't done anything to it. They have put a light source um, that is coming from one direction, like off to the side. It's not uniform. And so it's bending over, right? We've just learned this. But then they've got a whole bunch of other experiments. The next one, they say they remove the tip. They're exposed to the sunlight. And you'll notice it just continues to grow straight. If you had to explain that, you need to be able to say that because you move, remove the auxins, the auxins can no longer um, create cell elongation, so the shoot will continue to grow straight. The next one is where you are covering the tip with an opaque cap. It means you can't see through the cap. Again, you'll notice if you expose it to sunlight, it still grows straight. That's because auxins are light sensitive. And if you block out the light, it won't affect the growth and they will continue to grow straight. However, this one has a transparent cap, which proves that uh, auxins are sensitive to light. It doesn't matter if you cover the tip. If it's see-through, it will still affect it. And the next one probably confuses a lot of my students as well. They cover the base. The point of that one is to prove, this one specifically, is to prove that auxins have their strongest um, effect on the tip of the shoot. And actually, that's where they are made, which brings me to my last two. These two at the very end prove that auxins are made at the tip of um, a shoot. And they prove this by taking a shoot, cutting off the tip. But for this one over here, they reattach it with a gelatine block. And the reason why they do that is auxins can diffuse through the block back into the stem. And because there's like a, a, a place for them to move through, we'll bend. This one, on the other hand, they stick the tip of the shoot onto a piece of mica, which is basically like a piece of stone or a piece of metal. And um, auxins cannot diffuse through metal or plastic or stone. And so what happens is all the auxins are now stuck in the tip which means even if I put the light on it in a, in a sideways direction, it's still going to continue to grow straight. So these are the two main ways that they can ask. Now, as always, I like to do a little recap at the end of my lesson. There wasn't too much terminology here. So let's get into, first of all, we looked at auxins. These are the hormones that are responsible for cell elongation, elongating it, making it longer. And we looked at how those auxins are sensitive to light and therefore have phototropism or they respond to light. Um, and also the fact that roots are actually negatively phototropic, which means they move away from light. But I will explain more of that when we do geotropism. 
We then spoke about something called unilateral light, which I really want you to know for exams and tests. Unilateral means that it's coming from like above and it's evenly distributed. We spoke about cell elongation, which is when cells elongate, they get longer and bigger and therefore cause uh, an increase in height or uh, a bend if the light is not unilateral. And lastly, I did mention geotropism in this video, which is the follow-up to this video about how plants and their roots respond to gravity. Essentially, photo and geotropism is what keeps shoots or stems growing up towards the sun, and geotropism is what keeps roots growing down towards gravity. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and make sure your notifications are turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.